got an old spec structure determination question here which deals with infrared, carbon-13 and proton NMR. So if you want to have a go you're going to need a data sheet so if you have that handy you'll need that for the uh, question. So it's in two parts, here's part A for three marks if you want to have a look at that pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answer. So the first thing we'll do is identify the two carboxylic acids Obviously those two in green there. We've got to use infrared and carbon-13 to identify them and then distinguish between them. So infrared is going to help us identify them because only the carboxylic acids will show a broad absorption between that range due to the OH bond. Obviously the esters don't have the OH bond so they won't show that absorption. To distinguish between them we're going to use carbon-13 we're basically interested in how many different carbon environments are in each molecule. So we've got one, these are equivalent, these three CH3, so one, two, three in that one. These two CH3s are equivalent, so one, two, three, four. So here's the main part of the question, the proton MR bit worth six marks. So we've got analysis of one of the esters has been done by proton NMR spectroscopy. There's the spectrum. We've got to decide from the remaining esters which ester it is. So there's just a reminder of the esters from that list to save you going back. So again, if you want to pause the video, have a go and then play on when you're ready. So the first thing we can do is rule out the top one. So I'll just explain why. This one here has got one, two, three, four different proton environments, whereas the spectrum, we've only got three peaks, so it can't be that one. So we're left with these two. I always tell my students to draw the displayed formula. It really helps you see the different environments, so they're appearing there now. So this one here is obviously that one. And this one here is obviously that one. So all I'm going to do is go through each peak. So we'll start at the left and we'll work our way to the right. And we're just going to say what the environment is. So that's from the shift value. The splitting pattern. So that's telling us what's adjacent to the protons causing the peak. And we haven't got any area information. So we can't sort of factor that in. So it's literally just shift value and peak splitting. So we'll start with this one. So delta 3.7 roughly that's appearing at is an HC single bond environment. That's from the data sheet. So we're talking about this environment here in this molecule, HC single bond O, HC single bond O. So this is a singlet. So that means the protons that cause this peak don't have any adjacent hydrogens so you can see it can't be this molecule because this proton here is adjacent to these two CH3s. These are within the three bonds that are going to cause splitting one, two and then obviously another bond to the hydrogens. So you would get splitting here. These however one, two, three, four, Five. There's five bonds between these and the nearest proton, so therefore they're the protons that are causing the signal. So obviously we know it's this molecule now, but we need to just explain the other peaks. So if we move on to this multiple now, so if we count the number of peaks in the expanded signal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this signal here at delta 2.7 is due to the H to C to C double bond O environment. So that's the other side of the ester bond, H to C to C double bond O, H to C to C double bond O. You can see that's a heptet. So this proton here will be split into seven by these two CH3s. Whereas this one here would come out as a singlet because it's too far away from anything over here. So that's obviously that one there. So we'd better just say something about this doublet here. So it's a delta, what's that, 1.3-ish. 
and it's an HCR environment. It's a doublet, therefore the protons causing the peak have got one adjacent proton. So again, it's going to be these these hydrogens here. This is HCR environment. And yes, it's adjacent to that green proton there. So we're going to get the doublet. This would also give a doublet in the same region because these protons here, still in HCR environment and they're still adjacent to that single proton there. So they'd both give a doublet. Well, basically that ester there, these peaks would be the other way around.